Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! When we last left off, we beat this game. But when we rescued Princess Tolstol, she told us that she had another adventure for us, and that we should be pressing B to go on it. And in fact, if we go on the title screen and start pressing B, you can see on the top of the screen there that we can actually choose what world we start at. Why do they call them worlds anyway, by the way? Isn't this technically the same world? Nah, whatever. The interesting thing is, if you have the world set to anything above World 1, we actually have piranha plants coming out of the pipes in World 1-1, which is normally not a thing. Now, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to actually play this level with the piranha plants in the pipes. This is only for the demo, because as soon as you start the game at World 1, the game knows you're at World 1. That said, selecting what world we go to is not the only thing that we can do now. Now, we can actually play on hard mode. On hard mode, all the Goombas have been replaced by Buzzy Beetles, and all the enemies move faster. Or at the very least, the enemies that walk on the ground move faster. So that's pretty interesting. Now, when I did this game back in 2009, well, first off, just a reminder, I already let's play this game once before in 2009, and that let's play kind of sucked. There was, like, visual issues with a crappy capture device, and those issues caused me to die a lot. Also, I forgot to mention that in my original let's play, my capture device did not like the signal from my NES and had some crappy sound a popping noise going on, and so the majority of the Let's Play had the game audio muted. But anyway, something else about my 2009 playthrough of this game is that I did not play on hard mode. In fact, most people don't play on hard mode. They see that you can, like, select the world and assume, oh, that's basically it. You can just choose whatever world you want to go to. whoop de doo And then there's the people who know this is hard mode. Those who know this is hard mode don't let's play it because it's really not all that different from the game normally. I mean, the levels are, for the most part, unchanged. There's just buzzy beetles. That said, I want this to be... I hate that jumping one up up there. I want this to be as complete a playthrough as possible. So, here I am, playing through the hard difficulty. That said, I could have totally caught up to that one up and caught it. Anyway, that said, I'm not going to play through the whole game. I am, in fact, going to take advantage of this, the Warp Zone. We can warp all the way to World 4 if we want, but I'm going to go ahead and just skip to World 2 because there's something I didn't get to show off the first time I was in World 2. The rest of the World 1 I'm skipping because there's nothing else worth showing off, so here we are, already in World 2, and I haven't even finished introducing this video. Okay, I'm finished introducing this video. So the thing that I missed the first time I was here is just up ahead. First, I'm going to grab this because why not? Now, up there in the blocks, I passed it up and didn't say anything about it. It is a vine that leads to a bonus area in the clouds. I'm pretty sure those are clouds. In actuality, they kind of look like teeth to me. Also, Mario doesn't throw fireballs, he spits them. That's why it has the spitting sound. And when he bashes his head on blocks... Well, I just spoiled that one. I was meant to say, he does not hit the blocks with his fist, he bunks his head on them. At least those are my childhood impressions. Those are the things that he did. Nowadays, I know better, but... 
I, I still would like to at least think that he spits fireballs. I mean, Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World, it sounds like he's spitting. And they seem to come from his mouth. Sure, he's doing a throwing animation, as I will demonstrate as soon as I get the chance. But it seriously looks like they're coming directly from his mouth. Mario is a fire breather dude. He would be great at carnivals. Anyway, here's World 2-2. And as was pointed out on the first playthrough of this game, some of these levels get rehashed later in the game, but with the harder difficulty. In hard mode of this game, though, the earlier levels are also set on the hard difficulty, which kind of makes the revisits even more rehashed because that means they're exactly the same at that point. But whatever. It's still an adventure. I don't know what I, where I was going with that, but it's an adventure, all right. By the way, why do these fish have beaks? I find that interesting. I mean, beaks are interesting, I guess. Which is why I just said that and I found it interesting. My point is, it's weird, but I like it. It is a visual aesthetic that I like. And in future games, they give Cheap Cheap's goggles. Because... Fish need goggles, I guess. Well, that actually makes me wonder... What happened before goggles were invented? Could they not see underwater without goggles? Or maybe the goggles make it easier to see underwater. I mean, technically speaking, I could open my eyes underwater, too. I just wouldn't be able to see very well, and actually would be kind of uncomfortable to do that. Hello there in the stream chat, Shadow Pedro. Welcome to my stream. I'm currently playing through the hard mode of Super Mario Brothers. Because nobody else does. Even when people let's play the All-Stars version of this game, they don't play through the hard mode. And it's a lot more evident that it's a hard mode in the All-Stars version, because you don't go to the title screen, you go straight into hard mode after rescuing Princess Peach. Toastal. Let's see if I can't survive past this this time. Yep. So I'm not gonna bother getting that Fire Flower. Oh, so, pro tip, do not look at the chat while you're marching into fire bars. And thank you for the comment there, Shadow uh, Pedro, I appreciate it. For those of you wondering, Shadow Pedro just said that I sound like a good commentator. I try, I really do. Sometimes I don't do so hot, but for the most part, I think I do okay. I did it! Oh, it didn't play the death song again. Whatever! I actually succeeded in that trick! I tried that multiple times in the last stream and just couldn't do it, so I'm glad I managed it at some point. Would be awesome if I managed that at the end of the game and rescuing Princess Tolstoy, but I don't think that will be the case because I intend to actually reach Bowser this time with my Fire Flower. It's kind of hard getting past him without the Fire Flower. There's that one up. Shadow Pedro is asking... Do you have to first pass the entire game, or is this on an emulator and you can load it to hard mode? I am playing on an actual NES, so no save states. I actually had to replay the game to unlock hard mode before the start of this stream. Now then, 
I'm gonna go ahead and hop up here because there is a vine to another area in the cloud. Teeth. Teeths. Teeths? Let's go with teeths. This is like heaven for dentists. I mean, yeah, there's supposed to be clouds, but they really do look like teeth. By the way, I hope you all are not OCD if I miss any coins along the way. They're not entirely important to me. Hello there, Beer Force! Welcome to my stream. For those of you watching this at YouTube, I am streaming this at Twitch at this very moment. And by the way, getting the 1-up trick is harder on hard mode because of how fast the Koopas move. Pedro said that I sound like I am commentating for a TV show or for a news channel. I'm not entirely sure if that's good or bad. Oops, I did not mean to do that. I will assume it's good. That said, I probably don't actually want to be a commentator for a TV show or especially news reporter. That said, if I was a news reporter, I would try to be honest about the news. And not, like, I don't know how to word this, something about propaganda. Oh, I'm not getting that one up. I'll at least get some points out of this. Okay, I just looked through my notes, because I have notes. Notes are important to making sure that I have something worth bringing up. And I mentioned in the previous stream that this game was ported over to the Game Boy Color on Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. Along with this game, the Japan-only sequel, The Lost Levels, was also put onto the Game Boy Color. Now, after the stream, Wario Land Gold Pyramid came along and commented on the stream, and he brought up an interesting thing about the deluxe version of the Lost Levels. I already pointed out that the, uh, the uh, deluxe version is not the ideal version because it lacks the last five worlds. But Wario Land brought, uh, brought up another point. He mentioned that the physics are different. You see, in the original Lost Levels, as well as the remake on Super Mario All-Stars, Luigi has different physics than Mario. He can jump higher, and he also is more slippery. But, in... The deluxe version on Game Boy Color, Luigi pretty much controls exactly like Mario. That's kind of unfortunate that they took away the thing that made... Oops. That they took away the thing that made Luigi unique. By the way, as you have just seen, you do not want to hit your head on the block that houses a fire bar. Don't because it damages you. But it only damages you when you're big. If you do that when you're small, it doesn't hurt you. Okay, and now we are proceeding into World 4. Now in the previous stream, since it was the start of a new day, I took an episode break here. But for the sake of speeding things along, and because this is hard mode and the second time we're playing this, I'm going to go ahead and proceed onward. And this time I got that one up. You go away, because you suck. I'm also going to take a bonus room right here that I did not take 
on the previous run. It's kind of important that I do, then... Uh, uh, it's... Imp it's pretty important that I do, too, because it's a power-up down here, and I could definitely go for a power-up. You know, after having to deal with one of those spiny eggs clipping through the block? That was lame. Give me some coins. I deserve coins after that. The more coins, the better. The more one-ups, the better. Better jumping is important, too. Pedro says, I'm saving up for an NES. Found one for $80 online. I wish that they didn't stop making them. Well, they kept making them for a long time. At the very least in Japan, they were still making NESs all the way to the year 2000. But eventually, they kind of stopped making them because people stopped buying them. Or at the very least... So few people are still buying them that they're not worth the cost of manufacturing anymore. Nowadays, there's the NES Classic, at least. 30 games for $60, that's a pretty good deal. Alright, right here is another chance for a warp zone. There's a vine in this block that will lead to a section where you... Go across some mushroom platforms with some coins, and eventually a warp zone that warps you to level 6, 7, or 8. But I'm not taking that warp zone. A lot of people do. But here's an interesting thing that some people may not know. Hold on a sec. I want to fall down here. Thank you. Here's an interesting thing that some people don't know. World 4-2 actually has more than one warp zone. The other one is right over here. There's only one warp. It goes to World 5. I want you to keep in mind the empty spaces to the left and right of this warp pipe. And now, here we are at the start of World 5. Beer Force has brought up that there's also a bunch of NES clones on the market. Yeah, I don't really deal with clone systems myself. I did not want to grab that. Shoot me! Catch them in my teeth! Boy, that's some rapid-fire action. I need to be careful there. No one up there, and... Let me see here. Oh! Interesting! So even though I skipped the level that gives me the coins for this one-up block, I still got the one-up block. I'm gonna go ahead and skip this bonus room, and hopefully not take damage. By the way, in Super Mario 1, if there's enemies on screen when you reach the flagpole, well, you just saw what happens. They just simply disappear. You don't get any coins or anything. Now, in this level, there is a bonus room that I did not take my first run through. I am very afraid of you, and the fact that you haven't shot yet means you'll probably shoot me the moment I stand up. Nope, never mind. I'm kind of surprised. They're usually not too nervous about shooting you, even when you're close. Give me those. Alright, you again. So there's a bonus room right on the next screen that I didn't take my first run through. I'm gonna take it now. And this bonus room is an anti bonus. It has enemies. It has enemies and pits that try to suck you down. I almost never take this route. That said, I am not really opposed to underwater levels in general. A lot of people hate them because different physics and sometimes they're kind of slow. 
Yeah, I can understand that if they're slow, they're kind of annoying to go through. I don't think that this is too slow, though. Super Mario Wands water levels have a good pace to them. Alright. Give me this. And there's coins under here. However, I was too far along. Let me try it again real quick. Nope, I keep sliding past it. Oh, I missed them. On my 2009 run of this game, I managed to hit those bouncing Koopas with a shell, and I was kind of proud of it. Oh well, not really important. Alright, we're making some pretty good time here. That said, I think I'm going to go ahead and take an episode break right here. We're halfway through the adventure, and we'll be going through the second half in just a bit. So, we will be right back. And hopefully I don't get hit by a bullet bell that happens to be just off camera coming at me.